What's up, guys? Well, Josh, uh, congratulations getting back into the win column. I guess what are the emotions after uh, you know scoring another like one punch knockout like that? Um, yeah, no, it feels good. You know, it's uh, this is the first time in my career that I was on a a, a two fight skid losing streak. I needed to get back in the win column. I wanted to uh, just remind people who I am, and uh, you know, I've had a tough 2023. I fought, you know super tough opponents. My goal is to get back and fight for that world title. Um, so there's nothing that was stopping me from fighting tonight, December 16th. I didn't care who was in front of me and there was nothing stopping me from winning. But it feels great. You know, I, 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 I respect Bryce so much and, you know, I, this is the first time I ever met him. He's a, he's a great guy. He comes from, his coaches are super nice and, uh, you know, when I hit him and then I, I got excited and then I looked over and he was still down. It's like, it's hard to, it's hard to celebrate. So I'm just like, wish him nothing but the best. I know he has, you know, a baby on the way. He's building a house. We're all trying to achieve the same thing. I, I, I wish, you know, I just, I wish no harm on my, my opponents, but at the end of the day, if it's him or I, I'm choosing me every day. Well, kind of going off of that, uh, I know like <clears throat> just based off how much you respect Bryce, like on the, on the broadcast it showed he was kind of looked like he was having a seizure for a moment he was shaking mm -hmm. in there was that difficult to watch in there like yeah you won but like it just seems like yeah. something it was just a different kind of knockout yeah it's, and, and i i feel like i've delivered some bad knockouts before and it's yeah it, it, it takes the the excitement away like i i didn't know he was that hurt then i looked over and i see that and i'm like shit i can't i can't celebrate you know what i mean because yeah, it's tough because I imagine what his coaches are looking at. You know, they're seeing him in, in like a very vulnerable spot, and I can't even imagine his uh, his family. You know what they're thinking. So yeah, I wish him nothing but the best. He uh, he came back. He said he was okay. You know, I just hope he takes some time off. He's a super talented individual and young, hungry. He'll 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 bounce back. In, in terms of how this fight played out, could it, could it have gone more perfect for you? You know, first round knockout, no real damage, uh, s snaps the two fight losing streak, and you, like you said, just remind fans of what you can do? Yeah, you know, this is perfect si situation. Every single time I'm hoping I can go in there, throw one punch, that's it. I, I didn't even break a sweat, you know I mean? This is literally, like my, my coach Joey Rodriguez always says, it's gonna be, uh, you know, I, I just execute our game plan and and once someone feels my power he was telling me all all week this is going to be an easy night for us when i was backstage warming up with danny chris and and joey they're like you hit him with that it's going to be an easy night we're going to go visit you guys and then go celebrate and and that's exactly what happened how motivating it was to you know watch feely get his knockout win and then you know you're not training with cody but he's he was sitting back here and he sat down to watch your fight so two first round knockout wins and then you score the knockout win. Just how motivating was, was it watching those guys do it too? Yeah, when, when Andre started us off, first round knockout and then Cody got it, I said, hey, I gotta be the third, right? Uh, another thing with Andre and I, um, every fight card that we've been on together, we're undefeated. My pro debut, I fought in a, a boxing ring in Uriah Faber's ultimate fitness, his gym. Andre fought, he won, he jumped out of the cage because people were fighting, or out of the, the ring, and then I came out and won. And we, we've, this is the fourth or fifth card that we've been on together, and we're undefeated. So it, it was just good vibes. And, and, and we're like, no matter what, for one, I'm undefeated on the West Coast, and when Andre and I are on a card, so we're like, we're just gonna keep that momentum going. Andre's gonna start us off, Cody's gonna come through, get a win, and then I'll, I'll seal the deal. Well, Andre wants to fight UFC 299 Miami in March. Is, so are you going to try to get on that card too then? Hey, I don't know. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the East Coast. Sure. <laughs> Would you want to rebook that Giga fight or are you kind of moving past that at this point? Yeah, no, I'm definitely moved past it. You know, I, I want to get back to the title fight. Uh, fighting these guys behind me, it's just high, high risk for not a whole lot of reward. It does nothing for me. It's just a risky fight. I want to fight someone that's going to get me back to that title fight. I have... This is gonna be my last run at a, a title fight. I think I have you know, a long career ahead of me, but realistically, uh, I wanna make a run at that title and I wanna be just 100% all in and we've been working on a bunch of things and uh, you know, I'm, back to, I'm back to like my roots, what got me to the UFC. I've been, instead of just being so you know, 
specialize in different areas. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get back to what got me to the UFC, and, and I have this new, uh, this is fire uh, ignited under me. Do you think you can start asking for specific names at this point in your career? Because I know there's some featherweight fights that are coming up. Do you just want to watch them all play out, or do you actually have names you would like to check off? Yeah, I think I have the, the right to uh, ask for names. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want big fights, and I want people in the, in the top three, you know? Whoever's going to get me closer to that title fight, I don't want to fight behind me. So I, I feel like I do have the right, and I, I've never been in a boring fight. I'm always looking to finish the fight. Is there a specific name you would like next? Whoever's going to get me back to that title fight. Josh, back here. Uh, you could write your perfect storyline. Would it be taking a featherweight title from Volk, or would it be getting revenge against Delia? It'd probably be Volk, you know, to be honest, and then I can defend it against Ilya. Um, that would be the perfect storyline, just because Volkanovski is, you know, he was a pound-for-pound pound number one. He's still pound-for-pound pound top, what is he, two or three? He, he's just a, he's such a good champion inside and outside of the octagon. I, I think him and I um, stylistically match up really well, and, you know, that, that would be a perfect storyline. Mentally, do you ever think about, well, if this guy beats this guy, then, you know, the routes to the title, so to speak, as an athlete? Or do you just focus on, hey, who can I fight that's available? And do you just kind of let things play out and try to focus on not, you know, what are the other variables? Yeah, everything's timing, you know, so it just depends, like, who's available. Um, maybe someone gets injured and you can step in. It, timing's everything. So it's, uh, yeah, I think it can go both ways, whether it's, uh, just let the, the division fight each other or, you know, if something big happens and someone steps in, it's like, if there's always a, if there's a big opportunity, uh, I've never shied away from opportunity. I'll, I'll seize, the, seize that every single time. Uh, just wondering, um, obviously going from prelims to pay-per-view, big deal in terms of exposure, but how did your friends react to knowing they'd have to pay about 85 bucks to see you fight? Mm -hmm. I know, right? Um, yeah, I, I like that. Uh, I was excited to headline the prelims just because, like you said, it was uh, it was free. And there were so many people, and then they bumped me to the, you know, kicking off the pay per view, and uh, you know, my my friends were like, I have to pay for this now, but it, it doesn't matter. Thank you, Josh. Just wonder what your prediction is for Alex Volkanovski versus Deporia. And it's it's tough. Volkanov, it's hard to bet against a champion. You know, he's uh, such a dominant champion. Um, he, he's been going up. He's, you know, fought Islam twice. He's just uh, it's always it's just tough to bet it bet against such a decorated champion. But Ilya is a tough, hungry, talented individual as well. So I I'm not the biggest fan of like predicting fights, especially like that. It's like a I don't know, but if, if, I, if I had to bet, I would probably lean towards Volkanovski just because, it, like, how can you go against him? You know, he just continues to improve, and he continues to, um, at least earlier in his career, people were like, okay, he's going to lose this fight. Then every single time he would win and win and win, and then he earned the respect that I feel like he deserves. And for yourself, how are you looking to improve as you continue your, your career? I seem to drill and train everything. You know, I, I got in the... I got in, not even a bad habit, but just I got away from my grappling. I got away from my wrestling. I was just, you know, just boxing and kickboxing and stuff like that. And, and I feel like that um, I just need to train everything. This is MMA, and I, I've been really working diligently on um, just getting back to, like I said, what got me to the UFC. My, my coach, Joey, could never get me to stand up when I was on the regional scene. Um, I'm like, I'm going to knock this guy out. He's like... And I would get hit, I'd take him down, and I'd be TKOing him or submitting him, you know. And, and now he can't get me to shoot, you know. I was just standing up boxing. Um, so, yeah, I'm just drilling everything with my coaches. I have uh, world class coaches, and uh, yeah, we're just going to keep chipping away at this. In certain terms, you kind of fall in love with the knockout in <clears throat> terms, eh? Hey, wrestling and grappling's hard, man. That's why I like to just stand up, you know, it's not as tiring. You didn't do yourself any favors tonight either. I know, right? Josh, one more. Um, how do you think Aljamain Sterling will do in the featherweight division? Because he seems pretty eager to move up to this one. I think he'll do fine. You know, I think he'll do well. Um, he's he was one of the the greatest bantamweight champions of all time. You know, so um, he, he's a crazy talented individual. So yeah, I, I think he'll do well. Um, I've heard he cuts a lot of weight, and so that's why he wants to go up. I think I cut a lot more weight than him, um, but. Uh, 
hey, I'm staying at 45. I think he does well, though. We'll, we'll see. I, I, I'm just curious to see who he's, uh, who he's going to fight next. Well, he seems to think that it might be Calvin Cater, actually. Oh, well. So how do you think that – what do you think about that matchup? That's a good, it's a good matchup. You know, I feel like he'd be trying to wrestle him and get him to the ground, and I feel like Cater would be staying outside, and he has a, a really good jab. So it's, you know, it's an in, intriguing fight. Awesome. Thank you, guys.